Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to show you how I uh, set up my magic mirror. You can see it over here to the right. Uh, this is the finished product and I'm going to show you a couple of things right here behind the frame. So basically it's an Acer, uh, like a 23 inch um, LCD screen. You can pick one up for like 50, 60 bucks on eBay or Amazon used. This one particularly came with some speakers, but you can see here I've got a Raspberry Pi, a USB microphone, that's for Google Assistant, and then I've also got a cable that's running all the way around it, and it's actually an HDMI to DVI. You have to be very careful because if you get an HDMI to VGA, it might cause some resolution issues because analog, digital. Uh, and then I've got a power cable. you got to make sure that you get the right power cable for a Raspberry Pi, and then I've got a 3.5 millimeter aux. Um, auxiliary cable that's going into the back of the monitor because I wanted to use the speakers. That's pretty much it on a hardware front in a nutshell. Um, if you go on Amazon you can see all these different Raspberry Pis here. Um, for a word of advice you want to get one that has pre-installed Raspbian software on the SD card or else you're gonna have to go to Raspbian um, uh, Raspberry Pi you know their, their distribution um, for their operating system and you'll have to flash it with a flashing tool like Etcher and that basically what you do is you take the operating system you download it and it's an image file and then you basically take that image file and you use a burning software like Etcher or uh, Win32 I can't remember the full name of it there's a couple of them it's a little bit more difficult in Windows than in Linux and you have to burn it to the uh, actual operating system so you can see here though that they've got them pre-installed that's what I did um, in the past and I actually had an old SD card that I was going to use in this demonstration and show you what I mean because it's a lot simpler just to do that especially if you're on slow internet or if you have any kind of connectivity issues and you don't want to download a large file and then flash it onto an SD card which will take an extra half an hour so this demonstration I'm going to show you um, basically you want to go and buy one of these guys off of uh, Amazon or eBay and get a kit and make sure it comes with a certified power cable uh, HDMI cable to also um, enhance your magic mirror or smart mirror, you want to get something like this just because it's easier than setting up your own PIR sensor or motion uh, control with an automatic on and off. This thing's only like 12 bucks. There's some other ones here too you can see, um, but basically you want to get one that, that turns on a switch or a light and since your LCD screen doesn't use up that much electricity anyways. Um, another word of advice too, you can pick up some speakers. These are by Adafruit and they work directly with the uh, Raspberry Pi if you don't have speakers on your monitor or if you want louder speakers. Um, here's the same USB that I got that goes directly into the Raspberry Pi. It is compatible with it. So as far as the parts perspective, um, that's really all that I have to recommend is basically you get a monitor with speakers built in it or get some external speakers that are auxiliary or analog and that you can plug into the Raspberry Pi um, and that are not going to use the Raspberry Pi as the power source. That USB that was coming out of those other speakers um, can be plugged into any kind of USB power outlet source So and the auxiliary goes into the uh, Raspberry Pi. So other than that, um, let me just show you here. This was the best guide I could find, honestly, for this magic mirror. You can see here I've got my Raspberry Pi on my, uh, my office, my desk right here, and it's actually plugged into my, um, my TV. And then that's a DVI connector. So if you want, you want to get an, a cable that's HDMI to DVI if you don't have an HDMI in the back of the monitor that you get. So be careful with that because I tried HDMI to VGA and it was all kinds of issues with the screen and I didn't want to mess with that. You can see here when I powered up that Raspberry Pi, it had an operating system on it. It just had the option to select it, to install it, and I installed it. And right now it's booting up for the first time. You can see over here on the right. Now I wanted to create this video because there was a lot of videos out there that were lacking or missing a lot of this content and the guides were so difficult when I was going through them and I just figured to make it easier if I showed you uh, from scratch how to put one of these together. So basically you get that operating system installed whether you burn the image yourself and the instructions here or if you um, get a pre-installed uh, operating system on your SD card when you buy your Raspberry Pi. All right, and then <clears throat> let's go back to the screen here so I can show you. 
exactly what I'm doing. This is kind of important because once you get into your operating system on your Raspberry Pi, you have to uh, do a couple of setup steps, change your time zone, your language, and then um, you have to also usually set up your um, wireless, but you might be able to do that in a previous step when you're actually first installing the operating system fresh off the SD card when you get it. So what I'm doing is, is I'm basically just getting the basic setup taken care of after I've first booted into the operating system. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm going to go down here into the Raspberry Pi configuration. When you get into that Raspberry Pi configuration, you go over to interfaces and you hit enable here to interfaces. We're going to enable SSH. We already have that enabled. We're going to enable BNC and then we're going to go ahead and hit OK and then <clears throat> It's going to go ahead and uh, have us restart the computer, reboot the Raspberry Pi, I mean, after we uh, enable both SSH and uh, BNC. And so while this is rebooting, um, there's a program called BNC Viewer. Uh, look it up in Google and download it if you're on Windows or whatever type of device you're on, if you're on Linux. And really all you do is you just get the IP address from your Raspberry Pi and you can remotely, you know, from your network, <clears throat> your home network or even you can remotely from the cloud log into your Raspberry Pi and it will mirror the screen to where you can work from it without you know needing to have it hooked up to the same monitor if you're working on one monitor at home. Uh, another word of advice is get one of those USB keyboards so you can actually work on your Raspberry Pi. Um, I have one already and you'll be stuck without it if you don't have it for the initial configuration that I just showed you. Um, but beyond that, when you get into SSH and you're in the shell, or if you are uh, remotely logged in using VNC Viewer, you can use your keyboard on whatever device you're on, whether you're on another computer or if you're on your, uh, you know, your laptop, your Windows PC. Now, when you reboot, it's going to have you enter a new password. Um, it might, it might not, depending on what uh, version you have, but I'm just putting in a password so I can remember it. And then um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, log into the Wi-Fi network. You might already be logged in when you first set up your operating system. It might have you know, let you set up your Wi-Fi there. Um, if so, great. Um, if not, go ahead and get connected to that because you're going to need to because you have to update a bunch of packages and download some new packages as well for the Magic Mirror. So go ahead and get that taken care of. And then um, what we're going to do next is... Um, Let's see, oh, it's going to have us do some more updates. So we're going to go ahead and do those updates. All right, so after you've done those updates, it's probably going to have you reboot again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and log in to uh, BNC Viewer. So I can just show you the screen and we're not using my, uh, my smartphone anymore for uh, giving you a little bit of a visual representation of what's going on while we're getting everything installed. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pull up BNC and you can see here <clears throat> now I'm logged into the Raspberry Pi from my laptop and this is VNC Viewer you just put in the IP address for your Raspberry Pi up the top there to get your IP address you want to type in ifconfig and you can see it right there uh, 192.168.1.39 and so all I do is I just pop that in at the top of VNC Viewer and we're also going to use that to um, use SSH which is another option. Um, I personally like to use um, SSH and um, work from the shell but if you're not um, as advanced with like Unix stuff like that I don't know some people want to use the UI or Raspberry Pi configuration and the settings and the menus and stuff like that. Um, if you feel more comfortable you can use that to an extent but for the most part you need to um, use Unix so Unix would be um, this black screen that I'm interacting with in the middle here and I've basically logged in to the Raspberry Pi from the shell using SSH and you basically use SSH and then your username which is Pi and then at IP address and so now I'm on my laptop basically logged in whereas I'm also logged in with BNC Viewer as you saw earlier but there's two ways you can really um, log in from your Raspberry Pi so you can work directly from your laptop while you do all this and it has this in the instructions as well as you can see here we kind of just went through it and I showed you okay and then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this um, script this one line of code <clears throat> that uh, um, basically uh, the 
author of that article put in there and it's going to start installing the magic mirror it's basically saying hey i want to grab this um, script from this location and download this package and then go ahead and uh, set it up to where you can actually start to run the magic mirror and so this took quite a bit of time i, I want to say the most amount of time was spent waiting on installs and updates as well as the original operating system uh, setup it probably took a good hour and a half altogether for all of that whereas just copying and pasting these codes in and following this guide literally took less than an hour it probably was more like 30 to 45 minutes so and if you really want to get technical down to just copy and pasting probably about 15 20 minutes of just little things here and there and trial and error and troubleshooting because there was a couple of uh, hiccups I had along the way and so I'm still just downloading that magic mirror package and it takes a little while here and so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up as fast as I can now that this is moving really fast, you can see a couple of things in here. Really all I'm doing, I'm, I didn't even copy that second line there. Um, the second line where it says sudo npm install g electron 1.7.6. It's if there's an unable to install dependencies error message, you want to use that, um, but I didn't have to. And then after it's done installing the magic mirror, check it out. I went back to the VNC viewer where it shows the, you know, the screen that's being mirrored over to that VNC viewer and it is working and basically it shows you how to start it up and then also if you're going to flip it from um, landscape to portrait you have to drop that display equals zero npm start into a certain script and you just follow the instructions and then down here what i'm doing is i'm uh, making the new script executable then i'm actually um, telling the script to start up at the boot and then what I'm doing after is I'm going to go ahead and reboot. And as you just saw just a second there though, I was also putting display in the um, config file because I wanted to rotate it to where it was a um, portrait instead of a landscape because that's how I have it set up on my magic mirror. Um, unless you have a very large monitor or one that you wanna have set up as a portrait, you would not do that, okay? And so what I'm doing now is I'm just rebooting um, the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to go ahead and log back into it. It should keep the same IP address, although it might be a good idea to make it a static IP address in your router. Although, you know, you can always go back to your Raspberry Pi and pull up your terminal, that little black box up in the top left, and type in ifconfig to get your IP address if it changed, because that can happen as well if you have a router that's set up for DHCP. So, <clears throat> What I'm going to do next is uh, I'm just testing it out, making sure things are working and making sure the thing is going to auto boot. And I noticed that it didn't look like it was auto starting. And so I'm actually going to go into the folder and check it. And I definitely see everything looks good here. It looks like everything's configured uh, correctly. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go back into my uh, script and just run this again because I realized that I actually did not do PM2 start and then PM2 save and then reboot. I actually only set up my display settings and I initially had started it and then stopped it and I did not pretty much set up the script to auto um, load at boot and so right now I just rebooted again and after doing PM2 start PM2 save and I'm just double checking to make sure that this thing will start on its own after I uh, rebooted the Raspberry Pi. And so I'm just uh, going back over here because like I said, I had some troubleshooting issues that I had to figure out. And then I realized um, I didn't do PM2 start up. And so it's very important that you take it slow, go through each one of these steps sequentially, just like the author of that article had intended. And if you follow everything in the right steps and you basically don't do anything out of sequence, you should be fine. But I tend to jump ahead. And so that's kind of what happened here. Okay. And so now I'm going to reboot it one last time to double check and make sure that it auto starts magic mirror because I 
don't want to just you know set it up and one day the power goes out and then it's going back to the operating system instead of this program which it looks like this time it finally did so it's stuck and it looks like it actually auto started when I rebooted my Raspberry Pi one thing I noticed people were complaining about SSH and getting into their Raspberry Pi and if you go into the Microsoft Store on Windows and you type in Ubuntu and you download this app this is how you can SSH into your Raspberry Pi. You see how I type in SSH Pi at my IP address and then I type in my password and boom, I'm in. Um, I think some people were having problems because they probably didn't have Bash or the Linux subsystem installed on their Windows computer. And so an easy way to take care of that is to uh, actually um, download that Ubuntu. So you see I just pulled out the USB microphone from my other, my already finished magic mirror and I'm putting that in the Raspberry Pi now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up the Google Assistant API and there's a really good guide that I'm going to include as well in the comments and if you just follow it step by step you can see here what I'm doing is I'm just literally following this thing step by step I've got a developers console account as well as um, the assistant API or Google Actions um, so you have to kind of get those set up those accounts set up and then once you do that you just follow the instructions in here where you set up your device your Raspberry Pi and then you you enable the assistant API which I'm pretty much doing right now it's going really fast because I actually just followed those instructions that are in the guide and so if you follow those instructions there was one issue I had with that credentials file where you've got to actually download it and when you download it you got to get it onto your Raspberry Pi and so really what I did was I just copy and paste the content out of it into an, a JSON file that's on the Raspberry Pi, but this is all in the guide. And so basically just follow this guide. You see that I'm going through it step by step. I had a bunch of issues with the USB microphone and the speaker, and I ended up in the end going to Google's documentation versus this guide because it was a little bit more helpful for me on setting up the audio for this because you have to literally put in a couple of commands that recognize where your peripherals are, your USB and your um, your sound. And yeah, there's identifiers, there's two numbers you have to grab and put in there um, in that script for when you're setting up the config for your sound and your um, recorder, your microphone. Okay, and so um, you might have some issues here with this and it might have to do with either your USB, your microphone, or your speakers and it probably is just simply that you have the wrong two numbers in here. You see how I'm changing them and I'm going back. You'll know or realize this when you're in the guide um, and you are testing it and it's not recording anything or it says it can't record at some sample rate or it doesn't recognize that format then there's probably something going on with your sound and your microphone um, setup. I tried all kinds of things. I tried turning up the volume. I tried changing the numbers. And then I finally, uh, I think I gave up and I actually went to a different um, documentation to see how to get that set up because I was having so many issues. I tried enabling the microphone here. You can see I tried <laughs> enabling the HDMI audio and it was just having issues because I bottom line I was I was moving a little bit too fast and I also uh, I didn't understand the guide you know, the article too well at this point um, just for setting up this part of it and so what I ended up doing was as you can see a lot of trial and error um, and so what I basically did was I kind of skipped ahead a little a little bit and I went ahead to start working on building out the Google Assistant library um, with Python on this Raspberry Pi and if you just follow the instructions it tells you to create a directory for Google Assistant and then to create a JSON file nano is basically you're, you're creating like a text file but it, we're saving it as JSON and then what I'm doing is I had to actually copy the text inside of the credentials file that I downloaded and then I pasted it over into that credentials.json file that I created based on the guide. The simplest way to do it um, and then what I'm doing here is I'm going to download those libraries and I had an issue with this later on I'll show you how to do with the audio and um, then I'm creating a virtual environment and it's going to be called ENV and then 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and activate that. And what it's doing is <clears throat> it's upgrading and adding setup tools and some other packages to this basic packages to this project. And then you notice that I skipped ahead and I did not use source env bin activate. That's important because what I ended up doing was I ended up trying to install these packages or these libraries with Python globally and it messed everything up and it was all because I skipped step A right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and speed up this, uh, this part. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of stuff going on here. It's going to go real fast, but don't worry about it. We're not going to miss anything. Uh, you won't and for for better reasons because I'm getting a bunch of errors here because I didn't install this correctly but you can see there on step 8 I finally realized oh I forgot to activate my virtual environment and so I did that and you can see a little EMP populate to the left of the green text um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and install these two packages and voila everything works fine <laughs> So yeah, you want to want to keep an eye on the sequence of things. Again, I can't stress that enough. The sequence and the way you have to do these things are is very important because you'll miss a step and you'll be troubleshooting for a long time and spend probably hours if you're a beginner trying to figure out what went wrong or give up, which is even worse. So I'm installing these these libraries now and everything seems great. I do have an issue with an audio file here when I try to run the sample script, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, authenticate here in about a minute. And once we've downloaded these scripts and then we go to download, we've upgraded the authentication library as well. Um, then I took that literally and I was like, okay, I've got to run this from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, which you don't need to, but um, you can if you want. Um, but uh, really what you want to do is is you're going to grab this URL you can see um, it returns a URL after we've downloaded that and not after we download that after we run this script after we've downloaded that library and you can see here um, that it doesn't seem to have found that library for some reason and it was because I wasn't in the virtual environment on my Raspberry Pi and so I went back to my SSH shell and I installed it there. Um, but you can see how it doesn't recognize the library or anything like that because when you install a virtual library and you're not running from that environment or you're not you're not working out of that project or that environment, um, you can't access the packages that you want or you need. And so I have to go on here and I'm actually going to activate that environment. And once I've activated that then I'm going to go ahead and run it <clears throat> and you can see now now it works and so it gives me a URL and I've got to copy that URL and then I've got to actually um, paste that URL into the browser you can do it from your laptop or you can do it from your Raspberry Pi um, but I had some issues with it at first you can see here it says error disabled client and this is another step that is kind of important and I'm not sure if the article touched on this but you go over to credentials and at the uh, uh, credentials um, you see over to the right it says configure consent screen and I didn't notice that at first um, and I try to you know authenticate a couple of times here and it doesn't work out for me and then I finally it dawns on me oh I need to configure the consent screen for authentication and I realized it when I saw the project name here it looked kind of generic and normally when I set up a project that I have to connect to or authenticate with or use an API. I've got some custom name in instead of project 637940. And so when I realize this, I go over to the right here and I click on configure consent screen. And then I just simply put in an application name and my email. That's it. And then I just go to save. And then I go and I actually just run that URL again. That's all I do. I just go and I, I paste that URL in and then I refresh the page and voila, it works. And you can see here it says to continue to Raspberry Pi the project. And then I'm going to hit allow. And then it's going to give me a uh, authentication code, like a token that I've got to copy and I've got to paste in that author authorization code. And then once I've done that, now I'm authenticated and <clears throat> I'm just about ready to start running some um, 
sample scripts. And so we're just following step five here in the article now. And then um, once this is done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go back over to the article and then we're going to grab this uh, this next line of code and uh, <clears throat> shell script and then what we're going to do is I've got to get my um, device model ID and my project ID and I actually have to replace those two spots where they're in brackets where it says project ID in brackets and device ID in brackets I have to delete all of that and the brackets and actually replace it with the, uh, the project ID um, and the, uh, the device ID and basically the, the project ID is you find it up at the top when you click on that little settings gear and you go to project settings there's your project ID right there and then your uh, device ID you've got to go down to the bottom over on the left side and you see that's what you got to delete and you put your project ID in there and then you delete that device ID right there and you've got to put in your device ID and, and where you get that from I didn't really say in this article exactly where to go and so I went back over to the um, developers console and I found that you have to go down to the very bottom of the left side there and click on device registration and grab that model ID right there and when you grab that model ID that's what you're going to actually um, replace the device ID with in that line of code and so now that we have our project ID and we have our device ID I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste those into um, that line of uh, script that we're going to run in the shell and then uh, we're going to go ahead and test that out. Now you'll notice here when I run that, oh, I'm having issues. Hold on one second. I'm going to go ahead and run it from over here since this is on my laptop and it's easier to copy paste stuff over here. It says I have a poor audio issue and I found out when I researched online it was because there was a there was a package that was missing and I had I had to literally look online and Google it and install the right package and once I did basically when I ran that script again for the with the device ID and the project ID you can see it's using push to talk which you have to hit the enter key and you can talk and I'm telling uh, the Google Assistant um, API or I'm basically telling my Raspberry Pi turn off the bedroom light and you can see that it's detecting my, my speech and I'm basically going to tell it to turn off the bedroom light and show you right there. You can see the magic mirror over there on the, the TV that's been running the whole time. I can see it also if I open my VNC viewer. But then what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and do the hot word, um, which is not push to talk, which is more like a button. You hit the enter key and you talk and hot word, you'd say, you know, OK, Google or something like that. And then basically you say what you want to say. OK, so since I got those four, still on so since I got those to work um, what I'm doing is I'm actually doing the last part of this article and I'm setting up the startup script and you just follow the instructions in here and if you watch the rest of the video I mean basically all I'm doing is I'm just copying it word for word and um, I named my script assistant.sh instead of start assistant.sh and then basically I, I changed the name um, versus what the author of the article had in uh, the instructions. And then basically what I'm doing is I'm just starting that script and then I'm enabling it so it auto starts. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna reboot. And all right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test this out here real quick. And I'm just gonna show you that I've got the, uh, the magic mirror running on my screen over there. And I'm gonna say, okay, Google, Turn off the bedroom left light. Turning the bedroom left off. There we go. And it's been rebooted and it started Magic Mirror and both also started Google. So um, that's pretty much the end of this demonstration. I just wanted to show you. So I just wanted to show you and as you can see I got my other Magic Mirror way back there. I don't know if you can see me or I have to throw something at it. Oh come on now. Oh, there we go, it just turned on. And that's where that little motion detector is awesome because you can actually uh, set it up to turn on and turn off. I'm using actually smart things with uh, Belkin Wemo and a uh, motion detector, but that other one that I showed earlier in the video is much 
much easier probably to set up than that and it turns off after you know five minutes of an activity so that's it I just wanted to show you and also show you that I have my other magic mirror over there because this whole demonstration I just wanted to show you from a bare bones setup how to do it so I hope you enjoy it and take care and leave me a thumbs up <laughs>